Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Jason Falls Show. That makes me your host, Jason Falls, as always. There's nothing I can do about it. I apologize. Uh, today on the program, uh, we get an interesting dual-purpose guest. Mark Savant is perhaps best known as the man behind Actadad and the Actadad community. Uh, as the name might imply, it's a content and inspiration resource for uh, dads, fathers who want to be more active in their children's lives uh, and get ideas on how to do that. So uh, very good, uh, large community, uh, very impactful community. And so we're going to talk to him about that. He's become an influencer in that dad space. So we'll talk to him about the influencer perspective. But Mark has also put together his expertise in building a brand like Actadad into a company that shows other people and brands how to do the same thing for their business or passion. Mark Savant Media has a great YouTube channel. I think I actually saw something from him in my TikTok feed this morning. So he's all over the place. Um, I actually met and heard uh, Mark talk at the Dad 2.0 Summit a few months ago before they shut down events uh, and found out that he's able to do all this because he's uber organized. So that's something I geek out on a little bit is understanding how people manage and all the balls they've got juggling in the air. So we're going to talk to him about that, too. That'll be super useful. Useful. Um, then uh, after we talk to Mark, I want to talk a little bit about TikTok. I'm struggling with it uh, in, in a couple of ways from a brand marketing perspective. I want to share those frustrations, see if you share them, and then we can sort of talk about maybe uh, how we can uh, resolve those issues. So I want, I'll go in more depth with that later in the show. If you want to talk about that, stick around for that. And then I've got a milestone uh, to update you on with the big book. So the Influence Marketing book is written. The manuscript is done. So we'll go into what's next and the timeline there for those of you who are interested in following along with that. Uh, but uh, before we start, uh, has there ever been a more appropriate time to figure out how to do live streaming? Uh, I mean, you're, you're at home, your customers are at home, people are looking to the internet for content more frequently at home. Uh, and if you are doing live streaming, if you are doing video content, you are getting a larger share of that audience's attention than perhaps your competitors are. We've got Zoom calls, we've got GoToMeetings, we've got Slacks, we've got Skypes, we've got Microsoft Teams. You want to look professional when you live stream. I'm not talking about just meetings. I'm talking about doing something on LinkedIn like this or YouTube or Twitch or Facebook or wherever you want to live stream. Instagram even does it now. But you want to look good. It's important to your brand. So you should be using live streaming video production software like the software I use for this show, which is Switcher Studio. And you know, if you've seen the show before, I've just been doing this, which I got to be careful because I don't want to screw anything up. But I'm just going to show you what we're doing here. This is uh, my iPad where I've got the Switcher Studio thing going on. And all these little boxes up here are my perspective video sources. So if I want to go to that stupid picture of me and uh, Orson Welles to see how I look like a big fat old guy with a beard, I can hit that button. And now if you're watching the video on LinkedIn, that's what you see. And then I can hit my camera one and go back to me. So this is by the, with the touch of a finger, I'm able to direct the show from a television perspective so that my live stream is more professional. I can throw up a fancy graphic that says Jason Falls Cornet right underneath me, right? And so this is what Switcher Studio does, and it can do that for you. Fancy graphics, split screen camera angles, which you're going to see when we uh, interview Mark in a few minutes. We'll be on either side of the screen talking to each other like we're on some cable TV news show, only without all the venom and all that stuff. Um, so you can record your videos like you're producing a TV show, stream live and produce a TV show just like a pro without all the costs. So go to switcherstudio.com slash falls. Look, I can hit a button and make that come up on the screen too. Go to switcherstudio.com slash falls. Make sure you use that special URL. There you can start a free two-week trial. Free, absolutely free for two weeks. After the trial, if you use the code falls, my last name, you get 10% off your subscription for as long as you have it. As long as you don't cancel, 10% off forever. That's pretty awesome. So use the code falls there at switcherstudio.com slash falls. Uh, they make our live recordings of this very podcast look professional. Now let them do the same for your live streaming. Go to that URL, sign up, check it out. You should. It's good for your health or at least your image. <laughs> They're doing their best to make my image look good. And let me tell you, it's a hard job pushing that boulder up that hill. <clears throat> okay. 
Uh, if you are dialing into the live recording of the podcast on LinkedIn, you can jump over to the comments section and ask us questions today. If you have questions of Mark while we're talking to him or if you have questions of me, uh, I will do my very best to keep an eye on the stream and say hello to people and see what questions they have. We always have to caveat this with if the technology is permitting. And I am clicking a button now to make sure the technology is permitting. And LinkedIn is just pinwheeling on me. Oh, here we go. Am I there? Hey, look, the video's there. We're there. Okay, if I click one more button, I can see how many people are here saying good morning. And uh, Milva McGee is in there. Hello, Milva. Good morning. Glad you're here. Welcome to come by. Uh, we also have, who else is that in there? That's uh, Chad Holsinger is here as well. So, Chad, good morning. Thank you guys for coming by. There'll be more coming in as we get into this conversation. If you have questions or comments, jump in there and uh, we will do our very best to elevate those to the conversation here on the big show. All right. So now it's time uh, for the good part. Uh, Mark Savant is the man behind Actidad and Mark Savant Media. He is uh, uh, he's here today uh, to tell us about his life as an influencer, building a brand around fatherhood and then how he's helping others navigate the online content world to do similar things with their businesses. I got to hit a button. Good morning, Mark. How are you, man? Jason, good morning. Thanks for having me on the show. I'm glad I'm glad you're here. It was awesome to meet you finally in uh, in DC a few weeks back, a few months back, whenever that was. Um, and uh, I just I thought, man, just from the productivity tips alone, which we'll get into in a minute, I got to get I got to get him on the show. Uh, but but before we go anywhere, let's do a COVID-19 check-in. Uh, where are you? Uh, how are things where you are? And are you and yours good? Yeah, I mean, very blessed at this point, to, to be frank. All my friends and family seem to be healthy and happy. I'm upstairs at in my home office right now. With, a, with some sun, sun rays and beaches in the background. I live in South Florida, so uh, it, it hasn't been too bad. And I live right next to a very large park. So even when that was shut down, I could still take my daughter out after the phones and, and, and all the madness of the day concluded. And we'd go running in the park and having fun. So uh, as, as far as COVID-19 goes, uh, we've been pretty blessed. But man, I am ready for things to get back to normal. I've got some <laughs> <laughs> it's it's it, this is a, a crazy world like you said we were at dad 2.0 conference two months ago but it feels like another lifetime ago it does. it does the flip side of that is my wife and i were going over our monthly uh, finances the other day and we realized that we saved two thousand dollars last month because we're not going anywhere we're not doing yeah. anything yeah so got some yeah. money in the bank i normally have to drive back and forth between uh my home in louisville and lexington kentucky which is now our way so i'm spending a couple hundred bucks a month on gas alone so yeah. just not buying gas for the last couple of months but like wait i can man i can i can order some delivery of some 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 steakhouse stuff tonight instead of you know a burger joint or whatever i don't order out yeah. every night but it's been it's been good on the finances from here anyway. But, you know, there's a lot of people out there that certainly are out of work right now because of the situation. So I think getting back to normal is something we all are looking forward to. Um, all right. So let's start at the beginning for you. Tell me about the genesis of Act to Dad. How did you get the idea? What prompted it? And how did it become such a, a big online deal? Take Take me through that story. Well, it's, it's been a process, Jason. It didn't start out as a well-fleshed out, thought out idea or brand identity. It, it took a while and it, it was triggered because I, I work in the insurance and financial services industry. I, I manage an office and I realized that I wasn't feeling challenged. I wasn't feeling happy. I wasn't content with the way that my life was trending and my bills were paid. Wife was happy. You know, I was healthy. So from the outside looking in, my life looked great, right? But I, I just wasn't fulfilled. I wasn't content inside. And I remember this manifested itself. One day we were out to eat, my wife and I, at a Chinese restaurant. And it was just an ordinary average day, but I was in a extraordinarily lousy mood. Mm -hmm. And I was just being rude to her. I was being rude to the server. Actually, someone sitting next to us, the table next to us, commented on how rude I was being, which has never happened to me before. And it was kind of like this, it was like a flip switch. I was pretty angry at the lady at the time, but thank you. You actually turned my <laughs> life around. So it, at that point, I started saying, okay, I got to do something different, right? I can't continue along this path that seems great. It's the white picket fence. It's the college degree. It's the career. Th this isn't working, right? 
So what can I do? So I started looking to a lot of different avenues and some, I, I think what happens when you're trying to plot out what your life is going to look like, you're going to run into, you just keep opening doors. Mm -hmm. You don't know exactly what's going to be behind that next door, but as long as you keep opening new doors, it's, it's like things, then more doors open up and then more doors open up. And it's, it's really interesting how that works out. So, um, so I started creating act dad as a way to create content for the interwebs. I knew, I knew I wanted to be creating content video experiences, audio experiences, images, community, social media management, marketing, et cetera. I knew that that is the best way to reach me. Like the, the days of sending out postcards and letters and, and going door to door, right. not interested, not interested. I, how can I generate an online presence, an online brand that brings people to me? Okay. Mm -hmm. And, and that's kind of how it started. I, I played around with a couple of different ideas, but when I started getting into fatherhood, it, that's when things really clicked. And that's so, you, so you say that you wanted to do something that brings people to you, but it was you, I don't, I, I don't get the sense that you were doing it to sell them on something, to make money. It wasn't a, a business thing really at first, was it? Well, yes and no. Yes and no. I, I, I wanted to like the end goal here is to quit your day job. Mm -hmm. and start doing something that you wake up in the morning energized and excited to do. Right. Right. And this, that's the goal. And I wasn't sure exactly how I was going to monetize Act Dad. We can talk a little bit about how that's happened in this, in this chat. But that wasn't my original goal. My original goal wasn't, you know, to become a millionaire, but it was to, hey, I, I want to create an infrastructure or life that, that works and then I can feed my family with. Um, but I, I've been, I'm blessed in that I don't, you know, that that's not my sole bread and butter. I, I've got a good job that, that works out, but you know, we eventually want to, to get into, to, um, you know, into online presence and brand building full time. Right. And, and again, it's, it's one of those things where I, I feel like a lot of people, I know this happened to me is that you've got this idea that everything's got to be perfect. Mm -hmm. I need to have the perfect brand with the perfect logo and the perfect title. <laughs> it, it's never going to happen. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? You just got to start. You just got to start and it can be really tough when you're comparing yourself to these big name brands like your Gary V's and your Seth Godin's, your Tony Robbins. You start looking, oh, these guys got it all figured out. Yeah, but we're talking decades of work to, mm -hmm. to build it out. So the best time to start was yesterday, but the second best time is today. There you go. Yeah. So at what point during the evolution of it all? Because, you know, Active Dad now is a, a, a big community of, of fathers. You've got lots of great traffic. You've got lots of, you've got a podcast. You've got different social channels that are very popular. So at what point did you think, oh, wow, this is, you know, this is working. And, and was there a point at which you realized I'm not so much, I'm building something that is kind of that goal of building something that I can one day monetize to the point where I can support my family with. But at what point did you realize, whoa, like my content is impacting people. This is, this is bigger than just some way to make a little bit of money. Sure. Well, I'll just give you a perfect example. That's something that happened fairly recently. Uh, so one of the things that I, I really love doing is what we're doing now, chatting, engaging, uh, developing live videos. So the, the part of Act Dad that is most exciting to me is the process of interviewing people on video, a video podcast, taking that video podcast and breaking it down for a, an audio experience right on your Apple iTunes and whatnot, and then breaking that video down into uh, content to distribute all across social media, right? So we're going to post a three minute clip to Facebook and to Instagram and to LinkedIn. And how can we take this long form interview and break it down into hundreds and hundreds of pieces of content? So that's, that's what really gets my juices flowing, right? And it's, it's really exciting time for that now because everyone's at home. It's a great time to reach people and bring them on. So anyway, back, back to your question. Um, I had an inner, one of the things that I wanted to do with, with act -A dad is impact people's lives and help people because fatherhood is tough and there's no one right way to be a parent. Everyone has a very unique situation. I do think there's some core principles, but there, everyone has a different s situation and I, I can't live every situation, mm -hmm. right? I have my experience, but there's millions and millions of other experiences. So what, I, what I've been doing is interviewing people that I find interesting, mm -hmm. that I want to hear from, that I think can bring unique perspective. And one of the, the people that really impacted me personally was Trent Dilfer. He's a Super Bowl champion, NFL commentator. Yep. Uh, 
And he's had some very powerful life experiences. And, and one of which was the passing of his son. His mm. son got sick and, and died in an early age. And it was, it, was, it was a really challenging conversation to have. But I'm glad that I did because several months later, I had someone reach out to me and say, Mark, I just listened to your interview with Trent and I'm going through that. Mm. You know, my, I, lost, I lost a child. And just hearing that you know, this doesn't just impact me, but there's other people that are dealing with it was, was really powerful. So that was kind of like a man. This is an in, an important thing. Yeah, it is. So in the in the in the evolution of that, obviously, you built an audience and you became an influencer. Uh, in you know whether you wanted to or not, uh, you became one in the dad community. Um, and I imagine at some point brands started approaching you or influence marketing firms started approaching you and saying, "Hey, how can we partner on content and whatnot?" So um, how did brands first approach you, and how did you navigate those partnerships early on? When did it kind of kind of dawn on you that, oh, wow, there's, there's a way to monetize this other than affiliate ads and things like that. Well, one of the things that's, that's really interesting when you're starting a project or a personal brand or a, a side brand that you're not sure how it's going to, it, it's just, like I said, doors just start opening up and you don't know mm -hmm. what the day is going to bring. I'll wake up in the morning and I'll have a handful of emails. I'm like, wow, I never would have expected this. Um, but one of the cool things that happened for me and, and one of the ways that I did never really foresaw monetizing was with Facebook groups, right? Mm -hmm. So I've got a, a pretty decently sized Facebook group. I think we're at 1600 people. It's very engaging, good community. It's, re it's a really positive place to be. Um, but one of the things that was really crazy is one day I got an email from someone working in a marketing firm in California. She said, hey, Facebook has asked us to create an, an ad, a Facebook ad. And they really like one of these videos in your group. It was a video of one of the community members, not even myself, one of the community members doing push-ups with, with his kid on his back. <laughs> and they're like, we want to pay you for this ad uh, oh, wow. to, to include this in our, in our video. And I'm like, I haven't done any, I, like, you know, you talk about passive income, like that's the definition of it. I didn't have to do, I didn't shoot the video. I didn't post the video, right? I just am the, the creator of this group. So that was a way that really surprised me that I can make money just by encouraging people to post in, in the group. And so one of the things that I've done in my group is I'll hold challenges, like monthly challenges. Like right now, we've got a build a fort challenge. Okay. <laughs> and so it's it's dads building forts with their kids. And, and, and the reason why I'm doing this, spoiler alert, is that someone from that agency again reached out to me and said, Hey, we're looking for videos of kids building forward with their dads. I said, okay, we'll do a build a fourth challenge. I'll have a cash prize at the end. Yep. The, the dad wins. I win. It, everyone wins. Yeah. That's and so thing. that was, that was kind of a cool, a cool thing that, that, that worked out. So in, in the evolution of that, I'm sure that there's, there's been other opportunities that have come along too, besides just the Facebook group. What kind of brand relationship do you as an influencer look for? What are the brands that you are like, yes, this, this is the type of, back and forth that I want. This is the type of relationship I want versus the ones who are like, yeah, no, I'm not like, for instance, a lot of people um, who are really protective of their community, which I know you are, are, you know, if someone comes and says, Hey, we want to sponsor a post and the product doesn't necessarily jive with the audience and whatnot. And so you're like, I'm not just going to take your yeah. money to post your ad. So what type of relationships are you looking for with brands? Yeah, and Gary V really hits on that, Jason. That's a great. That's a great point. Gary V put puts that out there that like don't sell people, you know, and and you want to wait as long as you can, I think, before monetizing your audience. I mean, I'll listen to a podcast that launches day one, and they're already running pre roll ads. I'm like, you probably only have ten listeners, yeah, and you're already trying to sell them on a on a gizmo or gadget. Like, you got you got to take a step back, I think. Um, but. When when it when it comes to to brand relations, the the, the majority of brands that reach out to me, I turn down because they want to sell me on. And sometimes people get they get upset too. I've had a time where someone wanted me to um, to they wanted to, to me to sell their next Uber. They had like an Uber okay ride sharing service. I'm like, this really isn't in line with what with what I'm doing. So I don't know that's a good fit. Um, and, and to be frank, most of the brand relations that I have have not been monetized yet. Typically, when I'm chatting with someone, it's just because I think that they can provide value to my audience, you know, yep. uh, but I but I am in communications with a couple different brands that I actually met at dad 2.0. 
Um, although a lot of those things have been held held up because sure. the sky is falling right now. <laughs> and I, I think that honestly, everyone's trying to like, is trying to double back and figure out what what's going to happen. Are we going to even have a business? Like trying to work with Legoland right now is proving difficult because Legoland isn't even open. Yeah. You that's know, tough. so there, there's, there's a lot of moving parts. Um, but I think that the best advice that, that I would give people and the, and the advice that I subscribe to is don't sell people, just provide value. And if, if the brand coming to you can help provide value to people, then that's a good fit. Like bark, for example, bark, I think is a great product. Mm -hmm. It's a great service. I'm not even getting paid by bark right now, by the way, but, uh, they, they help dads make sure that their kids are browsing online safely. And I'm, I'm all about that. I, I'll, I'll talk about it, even though I'm not getting paid by them. Um, and if, if you feel, basically, I think the rule of thumb is, is this a product that you would use? Yep. Is this a service that you would use? Okay. This is some, this is the type of brand that you want to team up with. Yeah, that's good. And for those of you who don't know Bark, definitely check that out. That was some powerful stuff there. I saw their yeah. pre Ruse presentation at Dad 2.0 was very gripping and, uh, They've done a lot of undercover work in the sexual predator space to kind of understand how they can provide safety measures for people browsing the internet and whatnot. And so definitely something worth looking into if you're a parent. Yeah. So now that you're, now that you're active dad, uh, you've, you've got ways to potentially monetize that and whatnot, uh, including influencer marketing. Uh, but you've decided to start something new. So tell me about the, the new evolution of Mark Savant media and what you're doing there. Right. So one of the best things you can do, I think, when you're building a, an online personal brand or online digital brand is listen to your audience. It's all about community, right? And what, what, what's ended up happening, Jason, is I got more questions about how do you start a podcast? How do you start a YouTube channel? How do you build a Facebook community? More people were asking me about that than they were asking me about, hey, Mark, how can I be a better father, right? <laughs> and so I was like, I keep answering the same questions over and over. I'm just going to start recording videos about yep. this. And, and I kind of started when I, when I was kind of trying to feel out my way as to as far as to what I wanted to do, Jason, I, I did start a separate channel that was kind of documenting my process. Mm -hmm. um, but when I started getting, it was, it was just happening every day. People were asking me, asking me questions about it. So I was like, okay, I'm going to lean into this and, because I'm extremely passionate about what we're doing now, creating digital content for the interwebs and, and, and the evolution and staying and trying new things and, and being involved. So, so yeah, that, that's kind of how Mark's about media manifests itself. So now I'm, I'm growing out this platform to talk about, you know, how can you start a podcast? How can you grow your Instagram following? How can you create good thumbnails? I had a, and it, it's, it's been a long road. Most of your videos, when you're first starting out, they don't reach a lot of people. Right. right? Um, but just this past month, I created a YouTube video which is getting about 70, 75% of its views via YouTube search or YouTube suggested videos. And I was like, yeah. ding, yep, ding, you know, cause <laughs> like, man, how, how many of y'all are guilty of this? You post a video and then you DM the video to everybody in your, in your Facebook <laughs> messenger list. How many of y'all do that? Yeah. I've done that a few times. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I, there's, brand, there's people that do that to me. They're like, like, I, I don't even know who you are and you're right. DMing me a link to your, you like, I don't care, you know, yeah. but when YouTube is suggesting it to people, it was like a light bulb went off and, and that video is, is reached not a ton of people, but you know, over a thousand people and YouTube is, is suggesting it to people. I only have 70, like less than 80 followers on my YouTube channel and it's reached thousand, you know, thousands of people. Yeah. So that's been, that's been pretty cool. Um, and now I'm kind of building out an infrastructure. I've already started interviewing because I love, I th and I think this is important, right? Let's, let's kind of back it up. Do what you love, build a life that you love. And you could, it's easy to lie, your, lie to yourself about this too. But what I love doing is what we're doing now, getting on Zoom, talking, and then breaking down that content to a bunch of different pieces. So that's, that's what I'm leaning into. Um, I've already interviewed about a half dozen people for my new show. Mm -hmm. the, I, I don't have a name for it yet, so I'm sorry I can't plug that yet. But um, <laughs> I've interviewed about a half dozen people for my new show. I've got about a dozen more lined up, and this is really important too. If you're launching a podcast, don't just launch, don't just do an interview or a show and launch it. Yeah. Build up a bank, baby. Build up yeah. a bank. And there's a couple reasons for this. A, you want to be consistent. You don't know what's going to happen. You want to make sure that you're producing content consistently. Mm -hmm. And B, you want to release a ton of episodes in your first week yeah. because what you want to do is you want to get 
the most value out of each subscriber. So for example, if I talk to Jason, Jason says, okay, I like this, I'm gonna subscribe. Instead of getting one download, I'm getting 10 downloads. Yep. And what this does is it tells the, the iTunes algorithm, this content is good, that people like mm -hmm. this, people wanna to listen to it. So pro tip if you're starting a podcast there. Super smart, super smart. Looking over at the comment section right now, a couple of other people have joined us. Uh, Joe Sesterich, I hope I pronounced that right. Good morning, Joe, welcome. Uh, to the program, Mahesh Nagati is here as well. Welcome, and I'm and I'm, I'm hope I'm going to say this one right. Uh, uh, Jackrapong Kongmalai is here. I believe I believe I said that right. I hope I said that right. Jackrapong, welcome. I, I said that right. I'm going to call you Jack. So thanks. Welcome, uh, welcome to the show. If you have questions for Mark while we still have him here for a few minutes, please jump in the comments and uh, file those, and we will uh, try to pass those along. I've got a couple more for him, uh, but anyway. Um, so what do you think the biggest obstacle is, Mark, for businesses or brands trying to dig into creating online content? Because I know there's, you've worked with several, I've worked with several, we do hear the same types of questions over and over again, but what's the kind of common thread of this is someone who is not a content creator. How do they get to become a, not a content creator? What's that hurdle? I think the biggest challenge is keeping up because it's it's so fast paced, right? The algorithm is changing every day on every platform. There's new features being released all the time. So, what what what's what I think is hilarious is these people that are selling these expensive trainings. And by the time you finish the training, you're thinking to yourself like, this was relevant six months ago. Yeah. But <laughs> but now now things have have moved. So it's it's really hard to to keep up. And so what I do is I, I try to focus on, hey, I'm gonna try something new every single day. I'm gonna challenge myself every single day. And, and there's a lot of different ways that you can do that. But in one of the things I'd love to talk about if, if we had a few minutes is TikTok, because TikTok is immensely powerful. I made a, a video for Actadad. I had about two dozen videos. They're reaching 100, 150 people. And all of a sudden I hit a video and it, it reached 45,000 people. <laughs> and then the next one was 15,000 people. Yeah. And, it's, and it was like, holy crap. I'm not, you're never going to get that on Facebook. It's just right. not going to happen. Right. You're never going to get that on Instagram, you know, but, but TikTok is a huge opportunity. And what's great about TikTok is that it's, it's simple, it's clean. And in your bio, people can easily say, okay, I like that video. I'm going to click this button. I'm going to go to his Instagram. I like that video. I'm going to click this button. I'm going to go to YouTube. So just try new things. You just, you, you don't know what's going to hit. You don't know what the algorithm is going to like. And I can tell you that what, what these platforms really want is they want you to try out the new stuff so they can know how that stuff performs. Right. And, and you, you gotta be trying new stuff. And that's the hardest thing I think for brands and big businesses to do because they're following a playbook that's maybe a, a week or two old and it's just, you're playing in the past. You got to play in the sandbox now. So I'll step into my, my second topic, my first topic after uh, you were going to go today because you've jumped into it. So I have some issues with TikTok from a marketing you know, brand perspective. Sure. And, and here's my main issue. Tell me, tell me where I'm wrong. I'd love your perspective on this. I find it when I log into TikTok, I see about eight categories of videos. There's people who are limp seeking or dancing. There's people who are tr uh, teenagers trying to get their parents uh, to yell at them for swearing. Um, there's people who are staging, uh, I got caught cheating videos. Um, there's, you know, a couple of people who are doing some ghost stories and magic tricks and, you know, things that are visual and intense and whatnot. Um, and, and then there's more lip syncing videos. Uh, it, it, it's a lot of that. And most of the content there is, you know, 15 second content. It, you can do longer, but 15 second is the majority of it. And because they're trying to be, and the, the way to get people to watch your videos on TikTok is to try to be outlandish, humor, you know, something, you know, amazing, glitzy, attention getting. There's not enough time, I don't think, in, in most TikTok creators, you know, sort of style to be able to present a product or service and communicate a benefit in a way that would stick. Yeah. And so providing content like an, a content expert like you is one thing because you're giving tips and tricks. I saw your one of your videos uh, on, on, on YouTube SEO, I think it was what I saw this morning. Yep. Very good video. Very helpful. Uh, I don't remember off the top of the head the name of the tool that you recommended there, but it was easy for me to go. Oh, yeah, I can do that. That's that's useful. I need to go download that. Right. 
But for, let's say, um, like, here's a perfect example. Um, someone, uh, a content creator sent me, here's a sample of something that I've done with a brand on TikTok. I was like, okay, great. I'll take a look at that because I have hire influencers for some brands sometimes. And it was a, uh, a canned beverage and the, the, it was a stop motion animation with some neon highlights around someone taking a, a golf club and hitting a golf ball off the top of this canned beverage. Mm-hmm. And the, the, the product shot in this video, the product was visible on screen for like 0.4 seconds. Right. And I'm like, right where is the benefit to the brand for partnering with you on that? I could barely read the label in that time, much less know what the hell it is, why I would want to try it. What's the point? I, as a marketer, I don't understand that. Now that's one example, and I'm sure there's dozens of good examples, but I'm just frustrated with TikTok as how is this platform and these content creators that have the millions of followers, how are they going to deliver value for brands? Yeah, so that's a great question. And maybe my co-host Adeline could take over there. <laughs> Hello, Adeline. Hi, Addy. Hey, can you give me a couple minutes? Thank you. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Working that's, from that's, home, man. That's what Acted Ad's all about right there. There you right, go. Right there. Um, yeah, so TikTok, short, very visually oriented. So your short form videos are 15 seconds long, at the most 60 seconds long. Yep. If you're doing 15 seconds, you, like you said, you don't have a lot of time. So again, it comes down to playing with different things. You know, as marketers, we know all about A-B testing and whatnot, right? So there's a lot of that involved, I think, in TikTok. Um, one of the things that, and again, just playing with different things. So one of the things I, I would think of if I'm, if I'm trying to show off a beverage brand is what's a simple way that I can get a unique visual effect. So I might try doing like some videos in reverse, for example, right? Mm-hmm. So maybe your influencer, let's say he's a, let's say you've got a basketball player or something like that. Anyway, I guess college basketball players can do this now too, right? But yep. shoot a can into a cup or you, you drink a, you drink your drink and you throw it into a recycling bin, right? You play that in reverse and all of a sudden the recy- it's coming out of the recycling bin into his hand. You know what I'm saying? Yep. And the, the drink is, is, is not going into your mouth, but it's coming out of the mouth into the can and then you, and, you, and at the very end you hold it up, right? Okay. So you're thinking of interesting ways to kind of play with the tool. And that's not that hard to, to do, right? Like, right? Not that hard. Um, so playing with interesting things, um, it certainly don't want to be too salesy. I think this goes for all of social medias. You don't want to sell people. You just want to show a little slice of life. You want to be native to the platform. Um, one of the This is, in my opinion, the best way to get reach on TikTok. It's to see what is trending today, what hashtag is trending today, and how can I fit that in with my brand identity, mm-hmm. right? So yesterday was let the, the fourth be with you. Right. right. So how can I implement Star Wars and bring that in? And and when you when and, and it's really easy to do. Like you go into TikTok, you go into search. Uh oh gosh, I'm gonna do it right now. Do it right now. <laughs> so step by step with Mark Savant. Here we go. Yeah. So you go you go into TikTok. Yeah. Right. Hit the search button. <laughs> you go yeah, you, you go to TikTok, you hit search. These are all the videos that are trending for the day, right? These are all yep. the hashtags. So you look through that, you find a hashtag that's that's relevant or hits on you. And you say, how can I implement this with my brand? And that, my friends, is extremely powerful. And then they're always coming out with new little uh, face covers and uh, effects and transitions. Play with different stuff. Play with different stuff, right? Um, and but here's where the magic happens. This is what you really want to have. What you really want to do with TikTok. You want to trick someone or you want to entice someone to watch the video twice. Okay. That's what you want. So if you're taught, if you like at the very end of your video, you got a little flicker of value at the end, then you're like, Oh wow. What did I just see? I got to watch this again. Right. Interesting. Yeah. So that's what you really want. So you either want someone to watch the video twice or you want someone to engage with your video, right? Mm -hmm. So leaving a comment, this is natural, but leaving a comment. One of the things that I've been playing with a lot recently is polls. Right, so you, you leave a poll in your video, then they can't help but hit yes or no. Same thing with Instagram stories. You really want to play with ways to that people that just can't help but type something in or hit yes or no. Right. And and so those are those are some things that I've been playing with that have been proven okay. pretty successful. All right, smart stuff. I love the insight on trying to get people to watch it twice because yeah. that kind of changes your thinking on how I'm going to create this. I like that idea. That's a good one. Yeah. yeah.
All right. Uh, Mark, tell people where they can find you on the interwebs while I drop the links over in the old comment section. Absolutely. So really, there's two main places you can search. I mean, look, if you go to any platform and you type in Mark Savant, you're either going to find myself or my doctor doppelganger over in California. So props, Mark. I actually met him on LinkedIn. <laughs> uh, there's there's only two Mark Savants as far as I can tell. Um, but yeah, you can find Mark Savant Media across all the interwebs on every social media platform. It's very simple. Mark Savant Media. Uh, or you can find Actadad across every single platform. I'm not doing these. Yeah. It's pretty simple to act a dad or it's Mark Savant media. And I would certainly love to connect and, and see how I can provide value to you and your audience. That's great. Well, Mark, thank you so much for getting up and joining us today. Uh, I know Addie probably is uh, anxious for you to come downstairs and spend dad time with her. So I'll let you go do that. Thanks for your time, buddy. Appreciate your brother was blast. Yeah, man. Good to talk to you. That's Mark Savant, ladies and gentlemen, he is act a dad. Great to have him on the show. Love that insight about TikTok, which I'll get into in just a second and talk a little bit more about. But um, okay, yeah, this is good stuff. Great value there. Go check him out, Actadad or the Mark Savant Media channels uh, on the interwebs. His YouTube channel for Mark Savant Media is really useful for those of us who, in the digital space who are looking for, hey, I need that little tip or that little trick. Like that TikTok idea is a little nugget that you're going to find in a lot of his videos. Uh, so go check that out uh, over on YouTube. I've dropped the links over in the comment section of the LinkedIn thread. I hope you'll uh, check those out. A couple of other people have come in. Uh, Elena Fisher. Oh, man, I'm going to mess this up. Elena, uh, Elena Fisher Chadowski. I hope I said that right. I think it looks like that. So I hope that's right. Um, and so she's here. Thank you for coming in today and uh, spending some time with us. Uh, Mahish uh, says in a marketing world, 15 seconds in TikTok is a huge opportunity. Don't disagree. I'm just really having a personal struggle of figuring out how a brand partnering with a TikTok creator um, can, can gain value there. I can see great value in how a brand can create 15 second interactions with their customers and whatnot, because it's obviously focused all on them. But if you're partnering with a TikTok creator, it's got to fit into their thing. And I find that to be a much more difficult hurdle to jump over. A gregarious Narain is here again. Great stuff, Jason and Mark. Thanks, Greg. Pr appreciate you uh, stopping by and uh, checking in on us. I see your live stuff happening on LinkedIn all the time. Sometimes I have the opportunity to jump in and, and see what you're doing. And sometimes I don't, but I see it. And I'm glad you're uh, glad you're staying active and safe out there. Hope all of you are, by the way. It's a tough, tough situation we're all in, but hopefully we're going to get back to normal pretty soon. All right. Let me let me let me expand a little bit on this uh, TikTok conversation. So I, I am on TikTok. I don't necessarily encourage you to go follow me there because the last couple of videos I've posted have been making fun of all the other TikTok videos that I've seen. And I don't necessarily, you know, I don't have PG language and stuff. I'm just goofing off. My bio on TikTok is goofy dad because my uh, then 11 year old daughter, now 12 year old daughter, Katie introduced me to TikTok and showed me how to use it and all that good stuff. So, um, uh, so I'm on, I'm on there more to embarrass Katie than I am anything else. Uh, but I'm obviously trying to learn it, trying to get better at it. Um, several members of my team at Cornette are very good at it. In fact, my, one of my main guys, Alan Marler, uh, has a couple of, you know, or at least has one over a million view, you know, TikTok video. So he's doing some really good content. He's figured it out. So we have the capability at Cornette of really understanding and getting into that platform, which is great. I'm just personally struggling with, okay, how do I take a brand? This is my big problem. Let's say I'm a consumer product. How do I take a brand and not necessarily create value on TikTok as the brand? Because I can go create a brand you know, channel and do some cool things that are not sales by my product kind of stuff, but value to the community kind of stuff. I can figure out how to do that. That's kind of what I do in my, in my real life, in my real job. Where I struggle is from an influencer standpoint, if I've got a TikTok user who's got, you know, a million followers or 2 million followers or 500,000 followers, and I want to partner with them to, you know, partner in, and get my brand in front of their audience in a relevant way within their content so that the audience isn't pushed off by the collab, if you will, or isn't offended by it, but actually says, oh, this brand is partnering with one of my favorite TikTok creators. I, I want to return that value to them. That's ultimately as a brand, what you're going for. I struggle to see 
with most of these TikTok creators who are doing lip sync videos and, you know, goofy stuff. I struggle to see how a brand can be incorporated into that content and not and and communicate a product benefit or, you know, some sort of, you know, impactful branding and not upset the normal flow of that content. Um, now, yeah, you could say, well, you know, if you're a Sprite, you can do a lip sync video with the person holding the Sprite can. Well, that's kind of product placement and kind of crappy, in my opinion. I think it's got to be something a little bit deeper. Um, at least that's what I want to take to my clients. I want to recommend that to people and say, look, I don't want you to do a TikTok with someone who's just going to hold your product while they're doing whatever goofy shit they do. I want to incorporate your brand in a meaningful way into their content so that their audience is like, oh, yeah, I I'm glad you brought that up with that brand. And I'm happy to know that about them. And I think it's tougher to do on a platform that is driven mostly by people who are goofing off. Um, I do think that right now TikTok is very hot. I've got some numbers here to, to share with you. I've pulled from Oberlo. Uh, I don't even know what Oberlo is, but they did a nice little uh, infographic and some in information about TikTok just from February. So just a couple months old, 800 million active users worldwide. 1.5 billion downloads of the app. Um, it's the most downloaded app in Apple's store for the Q1 of 2019, so a year ago, with 33 million downloads. So it's outpacing all these other social networks. 41% of TikTok users are aged between 16 and 24. Now, that's concerning for some brands. You know, I work in the spirits industry and that's a problem, but I've also seen Comscore and some other graphics that are like, you know, 80% of the audience there is 24, 25 and above. So that, that might be a little uh, of a conflict. I'm not sure where that's coming from. Um, it's big in countries other than the USA. Obviously, TikTok used to be musically and it was uh, integrated with a Chinese startup um, that, so that, so part of it started in China. It was a merger. It's huge in India now. Lots of, of people in India are using TikTok. The average TikTok user spend 52 minutes a day on the app. Now, I will say this about TikTok. I will open it up and, and literally say, I'm going to look at a couple things on TikTok, and then I'm there for 30 minutes. The content is compelling. It's Even though it's in most of the, most of the time, in my opinion, it's dumb. Um, it's lip sync videos and um, they, they had this one challenge where uh, women would walk into the living room of their husband or boyfriend who was playing a video game naked to see if they could distract him. So that stuff is just it's it's amusing, I guess. And the reactions are funny, I guess. But it's dumb content. It's nothing you know meaningful. Um, but it's compelling. It's, it's hard to put it down. It's, a, it's a little bit like rubbernecking, kind of a train wreck kind of thing, <laughs> although not, not nearly that negative. Um, but it's compelling content. So I can see why brands are looking at TikTok and thinking, I need to be involved in that in some way. But you have to remember, just like Instagram grew in popularity because there weren't any ads there, TikTok is growing in popularity because it's not a brand heavy platform right now. It's becoming that. And that's going to tone down the, you know, the fascination with it. It's going to level out and it's going to become more sponsor driven and advertisement driven, which is going to diffuse a little bit of the enthusiasm. But just like Facebook and Instagram have done, it's still going to be a relevant platform. So we got to think about it. I'm just having a struggle with that influencer marketing component of how does a brand incorporate itself in someone else's content on this particular platform in an interesting way that's lasting and impactful for the brand. That's tough. And so I think the TikTok creators who figure that out and are able to work with brands in successful ways to do that are going to be supremely successful in influencer marketing uh, programs for building their own bank accounts and networks and whatnot, uh, because that's a challenge. It's a creative challenge. It's one of those challenges that I think you could lob at a lot of creative departments at agencies, and they probably wouldn't really be able to nail it too much because it's, it's unique content. It's a unique environment and it's not an environment that's real, you know, brand friendly right now in terms of, yes, we want to watch brand content all the time. 
So I think there's a significant challenge for us as an industry to overcome there. If you have thoughts on that, I'd love to hear them jump in the comments on LinkedIn or uh, or uh, head over to the blog post later today when we post the recordings, video and audio of this at jasonfalls.com. I'd love to have you jump in the comments or you can you know hit me on the social networks and ask me those questions. Tell me what you think. I think that'd be good. Uh, Elena says, uh, have you seen any serious brands think financial services or large corporations that are doing great stuff on TikTok? The answer is no. Uh, I've seen uh, a couple of them do just ads, just, Hey, we're going to do a 15 second pre-roll or interrupt everybody's feed with a little advertisement. I've seen a couple of those, but the content's not necessarily TikTok content. It's just a commercial in the middle of TikTok content, which I don't think is it's, you're going to get an impression, but you're not going to get a, you're going to make a lasting impression. You're not going to make a good impression in that particular, uh, approach. I don't think. I haven't seen any others uh, that are doing it. The consumer product goods, the makeup and, and beauty, uh, the you know soft drinks and things like that. The the CPG world has a little bit more relevance because in 15 seconds I can say you know you want to see how I got this beautiful face. I used this cream, whatever, and you can figure that a way to make that somewhat relevant in your feed. But I haven't seen the serious serious brands, as Alana says, uh, do that. Uh, Gregarious Narain, brilliant guy. Uh, perhaps one angle is poking fun at yourself, bringing a bit of sarcasm for traditional brands on TikTok. Think how a comedian might mention you. That's a that's a perfect way to think about it in a lot of ways, uh, Gregarious, because um, TikTok is is largely humor driven. Uh, the 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 lip sync stuff is beyond music. It's now you'll have some you know bit from another TikTok user or a bit from a comedian or a bit from a TV show. And now you've got people lip syncing somebody else's just words as opposed to singing, which I think is a little odd, but I can see how it's amusing. I mean, again, I'll open up TikTok and just be glued to it. So it's compelling. There's there's something there that keeps people there. I wonder, we might want to call Roger Dooley and find out what the uh, psychological reason for that is, because it, it can be really addicting. But I definitely think it's a network that we as as marketers need to understand better and participate in more and find more creative ways to integrate products and services in it that are not going to offend the community. I never want to do anything for my the brands that I work with that's going to upset the apple cart. I want to integrate it in a meaningful way where value is exchanged. The brand provides value to the influencer and or the audience and the audience then provides value back to the brand. That's the only way that it should work. And if it doesn't work, then you shouldn't do it. So I'm struggling with the old TikTok. Well, I'll keep playing with it. If you want to follow me on the TikTok, I'm I'm the Jason Falls, I think, or Jason Falls. I don't remember what I am. You can find me. But I'm basically making fun of other people's uh, types of content that I see, which is (laughs) just amusing to me if anybody else. Okay. uh, Last thing today on the show, the book update. Um, uh, the good news is the first draft of the manuscript of the entire book is done. It is written. Uh, finished that up this past week. Um, it is 17 chapters long plus an introduction. I haven't written any of the the, the for matter or the after matter. <laughs> there's a couple appendices I have to put together still. So there's some work to be done there. But I've entered phase two. So if you're interested in writing a book and you want to know how this process happens, Phase two, after you write the manuscript, um, is there's obviously plenty of editing that's going to happen now and in the future. But phase two really is to prep the um, manuscript for the publisher. You have to do a couple of things. First of all, they're going to give you a style guide and a a formatting guide to make sure it's got to be in a Word document. It's got to be Times New Roman, blah, blah, blah. So I've done all that. That's just an hour's worth of work. Um, And then uh, you you have to fact check and or get permission to use uh, material that you've used. And so different publishers have different policies. My publisher, Entrepreneur Press, uh, actually wants me to get anyone that I interviewed that I used a quote from or used significant facts from the interview for the book. They want me to get permission from that person, a simple one page I give you permission to use the interview in your book. Um, I have to go get those people to sign off on that. So that's an administrative task that has to happen. Um, in, in doing so, the way I approach that is I'm actually copying and pasting the passage where I mention them and talk about what they contributed, letting them see that with kind of a friend DA. Please don't share this with anybody. Um, 
letting them see that and give me feedback. You know, is, is, did I get your quote right? Is it factually correct? Do I need to change anything? Most of the people that I'm sending that to are, well, this is great. Sign off. Good luck. Send me a copy of the book when you get it. Perfect. A couple of them were like, well, uh, I want to change the quote or this might be a little bit off or I found a typo, that kind of thing. So you've got a little bit of a back and forth there on, on a couple of them too. Once uh, I, I have that all aligned and I have the manuscript, the next thing that I have to have in order to submit everything to the publisher is all figures and illustrations from the text that I refer to. Because there's some charts and graphs in there, some things that I want to visualize for people within the book. I have to get those together too. Now, some publishers have an artist who will do that with you. I have actually uh, reached out to my friend, Sarah Clevenger, who is an artist here in Louisville, uh, someone who's a good friend of mine and, and that I've worked with on a couple of things before. I actually have one of her paintings in, in, my, in my house, uh, the skyline of Louisville. Um, I asked her uh, to do the illustrations for my book. And she was very excited to do so. So I've given her a list of here's all the figures that I need figure four, one, four, two, five, one, six, one, et cetera. Here's the description of what I'm looking for. Here's my rudimentary, you know, PowerPoint or Excel graph of what I think it could potentially look like, or even a pencil sketch. So I've given all that to her to return, you know, higher quality, nicely designed, uniform look and feel images to me. Once I get all that together, I'm ready to submit everything to the publisher. And then the real editing process begins because the publisher has several, like they have a content editor and they have a copy editor for grammar and punctuation. And there's probably another person who reads it to say, this doesn't make any damn sense. Right. So then they send that all back to me with red ink all over it. And then I have to kind of rewrite everything. That's generally the process high level. So we're in phase two. The editing is phase three and then waiting on the publisher to get the damn thing done is phase four. And in the, in that time I'm figuring out how I'm, how I'm going to launch and market and all that kind of stuff. So that's where we are. Very happy to have the manuscript done. Um, and for those of you who subscribe to the email newsletter, I'll be working on that this week because I know uh, we've got a May newsletter uh, to come to you and I've got a good story for that one coming up. So you'll want to make sure that you uh, have that subscription jumped in. If you go to jasonfalls.com and look for the and slash blog, if you want to go into the post or there's several places on the site, you can subscribe to the newsletter if you're not already. Some good stuff uh, generally about influence. Sometimes it's influencer marketing specific. Sometimes it's about persuasion in a broad way, but that'll be coming up later this week, probably early next week is when that newsletter will go out. So, all right, that's all the, uh, all the, all the work we have to share with you today. Uh, special thanks to Mark Savant for coming by from Act to Dad and sharing his insights with us. Great to have him here next week on the show. We'll finally get to make up for our technical disaster of a program a few weeks back. Jim Joseph, from BCW will be back with us. He was here a while back. One thing or another happened technically that threw that episode completely out the window. The recording didn't even didn't even record. So I couldn't even publish it after the fact and edit it and make it right. So we just had a disaster of a day and just called it and said, you know what? The gods are not, the stars are not aligned for us today. We're going to do this later. We're making that up next week. He's got a new book called The Conscious Marketer. And we're going to talk about that, plus get his perspective on lots of things. Jim's really a legend in the advertising world. And uh, I've been it's been fun getting his perspective on things and kind of talking to him a few times in preparation for the first show and now this version of the show. So join us for the live recording of that show with the video stream on LinkedIn at 8 a.m. Eastern, 5 a.m. Pacific next Tuesday. If you can't join us live, the audio recording will hit the podcast feed and the YouTube video will be uploaded to my YouTube channel. Uh, that's next Tuesday, May the 12th, live on LinkedIn or catch the show whenever you want afterwards. Uh, do describe to the uh, subscribe to the YouTube channel if you like, if you get content there and you enjoy YouTube as opposed to listening to a podcast or whatever. If you go to jason.online slash YouTube, you can get the video recordings of our show that we do live on LinkedIn. And then if you prefer to consume the podcast type Intel that way, you can do that or you can just subscribe to the podcast and you'll catch the episode if you don't catch us live on LinkedIn next week. So that's jason.online slash YouTube if you want to check that out. And now we hit a few buttons and we say goodbye to you uh, because it's that time and you got to get to work and I got to get to work. So that'll do it for this edition of the Jason Falls Show. If you liked the episode, share it with your networks or jump over and give us a review on your podcast network of choice. We appreciate that. Look for me on the social networks. I'm at jason.online slash LinkedIn slash Twitter slash whatever. 
uh, or just search for Jason Pauls. Until next time, everyone, I'll see you on the interwebs. <laughs>